Here's everything you might have missed in Vox Machina Season 2, Episodes 10 through 12. Welcome back to Nerdist News. I'm Hector Navarro, and today we're going back to Taldore one more time for the year because we've witnessed the finale to the second season of The Legend of Vox Machina. Episodes 10 through 12 of the second season of the series, based on critical roles, critically acclaimed first campaign, delivered a lot of what fans wanted to see on their TV screens as Vox Machina clashed against the Chroma Conclave, and we're going to break down everything that happened, what it means for the characters, and all the Easter eggs and references that we spotted along the way in just a moment, because we want to give you a chance to catch up if you haven't yet. We don't want to trap you here, so this is your spoiler warning. Son of a <laughs> <laughs> He's not very smart, is he? Let's get into it. We've got a long journey ahead of us through mountains, the sky, and a butthole. Episode 10, The Kill Box, opens with Keyleth, Vax, Vex, and Percy returning via Garmiali's portal from the Fey Realm. When they discover Whitestone being hidden by a cloaking spell and some returning allies like Gilmore, Alora, Kima, Keeper Yenin, and Percy's sister Cassie, this half of Vox Machina learns that the Fey Realm follows Las Vegas rules. They thought they were there for three days, but in reality, they were there for three weeks. <laughs> I've been there. So there's no time to waste. They've got to get to Westrun to help out their friends in a jam, namely Grog, Scanlan, and Pike. Because now we're back to the end of the previous episode where Grog stands up to Kevdak, despite Grog being in his weakened form. And thus begins the greatest nephew versus uncle showdown since Simba took on Scar. <laughs> Grog is challenging Kevdak to bring honor back to the herd of storms since Kevdak bent the knee to a dragon. The rules of their single combat are easy. The fight ends when someone dies. Good, because I can't keep track of any more than that. Since Critical Role, well, rolled for stats, Travis Willingham's role for Grog's intelligence is pretty infamous. He got a six, meaning Grog has a negative two modifier for all intelligence checks. Oh good, my modifier is negative two, so yippee ki -yay -yay. Six. But since Grog got rid of his bad news blade, Craven Edge, it's a fist fight. Grog is pretty outmatched, and things get worse when Kevdak notices Pike hiding nearby and captures her along with Scanlan and Kaylee. And things get even worse again when Kevdak frickin' impales Grog on a stake and then threatens to kill Pike. The impaling creates a visual symmetry to when Grog impaled Pike on Craven Edge. Or maybe this is when things get better, because this is the moment of clarity Grog needs, where, with the help of an Earthbreaker Groon cameo, he truly realizes the source of his strength, his friends. Buddies! Specifically his short friends, like me. And we get the most epic, I would like to rage, of the season. Hell, of the entire series so far. I would like to... That's the one. Grog snaps the stake into twigs and his muscles are back, baby. But as Grog grew, so does Kevdak. The awakened state of the Titan Stone Knuckles allows the wielder to cast enlarge and reduce on themselves, which seems to be what Kevdak did here. But Kevdak's cockiness about Grog trusting his friends is premature because the rest of Vox Machina has shown up to help. Vox Machina! <laughs> Scanlan plays a metal song to bolster the team. Everyone gets a moment of badassery. If you freeze frame on Keyleth's tiger form here, her stripes resemble her horns, which is awesome. We even get to see Fenthris's awakened state creating vines and brambles. Grog slices Kevdak's arm off That is badass before getting beat with said arm. When the fight turns sour again, Vex asks Grog if he's willing to try something crazy. Of course he is. It's Grog. They pull a literal death from above, cleaving Kevdak in twain. And now Vox Machina has scored another vestige of divergence, the Titan Stone Knuckles. Grog's not interested in leading the herd of storms, though, so he turns leadership over to his cousin, Zanror, who will lead with honor. Then it's party time. Grog wants the help of the herd to take down Umbilical. Umbersu. Fuck him too. Scanlan sings a song with backup by Kaylee and Dr. Dranzel's spectacular traveling troupe. Keyleth asks Vax to dance, but he shuts her down, and boy, did that feel awkward. But that's not as awkward as things got, because Scanlan gets to know Kaylee a little bit better. 
after he references the time he turned the party into cows in episode 26 of the stream, he strips down to his fancy skivvies and he learns that Kaylee, the gnome he's been trying to sleep with, is his daughter. Wait, I'm daddy? Old boy, I mean, oh boy, he's in trouble. And now we're on to episode 11, The Belly of the Beast. More on how exactly they get into that belly in a bit, <laughs> a butthole. Because it starts where we left off, Scanlan realizing he went to a room to sleep with his daughter. Gross. He's been a bad dad, yes, but Kaylee won't kill him because that would just give Scanlan another out. Then Kaylee pins him to the bed with the magical sword. He's got to learn not to run from his problems. The tavern in this Scanlan flashback, the Leaky Tap, is a tavern that shows up in Campaign 2 of Critical Role. Also, Firejaw Ale might be a reference to Strongjaw Ale, a piece of Critical Role grog merch. And Scanlan's bag has a Critical Role logo on it. Look at that. Vax sees a vision of the souls of the dead reaching out to him. He's got some sh** to work out with the Matron of Ravens. Then we check in with the baddies. Thordak demands an update from Umbrasil and warns him not to get too distracted looking for vestiges. Anna Ripley is there to remind Umbrasil of their deal. He gets power and she gets resources. But back to the party. A half giant that kind of looks like Matt Mercer even gets to almost say Matt's catchphrase. So I said you can certainly- Me? Oh, thank you. And Scanlan makes the worst metaphor of all time. So you just found out you had a, a puppy and you try to sleep with that puppy. Well, he really screwed the pooch with that. Wait, never mind. And while Percy plans the trap they'll spring on Umbrasil, Vax goes to deal with his whole matron thing, followed by Keyleth with a crush, and Vax, who tells him, Do not go far from me. <laughs> Vax has a jaunt through a blood pool and a face-to-face -face with the goddess of death herself. He agrees to their pact, and we see another side of the matron. It's Vax's job now to help protect the sanctity of life and death. The entire experience helps calm Vax and give him purpose, even if Vex and Keyleth are shocked to see him covered in blood. What the f***? Percy's planned a dragon-sized trap, but before they build it, Xanroar gives Grog a new weapon, Kevdak's Blood Axe. Grog, of course, has to make sure it doesn't talk to him first. Nothing to say. <sighs> Whew. And Scanlan tries to patch things up with Kaylee, which does not work. Dr. Dranzel's troop is headed to Ankarel, as far as they can get from the Chroma Conclave. When Umbrasil arrives in Westron, he notices the trap, but Vex manages to trip it anyways. Vox Machina, along with the herd, do their best, but Umbrasil escapes and turns invisible. And like my grandfather always used to say, fighting a dragon is hard enough, but if that dragon can turn invisible, know when to walk away. Best advice he ever gave me. When Vex uses Fenthrus to reveal Umbrasil, Scanlan and Vax have a plan. They need to get inside the dragon to defeat it, but not through the mouth. That's right, they pull off what so many people wanted to see Ant-Man do to Thanos. Of course, Scanlan finds a path to victory through a butthole. They give Umbrasil, <laughs> sorry, let me do that again. That was great, that was great. Of course, Scanlan finds a path to victory through a butthole. They give Umbrasil a big tummy ache by anchoring Kaylee's magical sword inside Umbrasil's stomach. This sword, seems to be a combination of two magical items from the first campaign's stream, the sword singing dawn blade and the immovable rod. Umbrasil rips out his own insides to escape death with Scanlan and Vax still trapped inside and Grog hanging on for dear life. And we're on to episode 12, The Hope Devourer, which starts with a flash forward to old man Scanlan reading The Legend of Scanlan Shorthalt and Vox Machina to his grandkids, voiced by Sam Regal's actual children, Kestrel and Maximus. Great job, everybody. This scene is full of Easter eggs, like a picture of Vox Machina that matches the wedding one shot they did after the mainstream ended with the Raven's slumber crystal. We also get mention of Craghammer, the first arc from the Vox Machina campaign, which the animated show skipped. But gasp, it's just a dream. And Scanlan, the man with the fat purple hand, wakes up in the belly of the beast with Vax. They're in trouble. There's too much acid to get out the way they came in. Get it? Acid? Acid? Come on, Scan Man would love that joke. He would love it. And Grog's still holding on for dear life until he also gets acided off. He uses his gauntlets to help break the fall, but his body is also pretty broken. Meanwhile, Vax cuts their way out of the dragon's stomach while Scanlan uses his hand to protect them from acid and then push them out. Nice fisting back there. Here's a the practice. Then the dragon swats at our heroes, knocking Scanlan unconscious, 
And now we get to see the exalted form of the Deathwalker's ward armor, which, like Red Bull, gives Vax wings. The party reunites with Pike doing her best to heal Grog before her spells give out. Keyleth calls the flying Vax beautiful, and Vex is upset that her brother gets badass wings and all she gets is a broom. Vax gives VM, Vox Machina, a pep talk. Sure, they're outmatched. Sure, they're injured, but so is Umbrasil. This is their best chance to stop the dragon. But Umbrasil isn't injured any longer, oh no. And now he relishes the fact that the other vestiges he seeks are being brought straight to him. He even hangs up on a call from Thordak, which seems like a bad idea to do to your boss. At his mountain, Gat's shadow, Vax uses the speed of his armor to scout out Umbrasil's lair, seeing the head of Kamal Giori, the Sphinx, before getting caught. Pike suggests splitting the party to find Vax, which we know is always a bad idea. Pike stays outside with a broken-legged grog, Oh, yeah, still broken. As the rest head inside to face the dragon. The fight would be hard to begin with, but is made more difficult by Umbrasil's invisibility and the fact that they don't want to injure Vax in the process. They escape into a nearby cavern, and Vax says the safe word. Sangha! <laughs> but Umbrasil uses Myth Carver's power to find the other vestiges. The fight is back on, with Scanlan wanting to run away from his problems. Umbrasil manages to beat the party and even get all the vestiges for himself. That moment, when all seems lost, is when Scanlan finds his courage. He gnomes up for the team and manages to snag Myth Carver before stabbing Umbrasil in the frickin' eye. Anna Ripley watches this happen and runs off to be seen, presumably, next season. And even though Scanlan seems dead, he's not. Wait, you're alive, motherfucker? And they find the literal dragon's treasure hoard. Score! Scanlan gets a magical key for defeating Umbrasil. We all precipitated. This key might be a couple of different things. It could be a vestige of divergence known as the Infiltrator's Key, but fans are speculating that it could be a tangible way to incorporate Scanlan's magnificent mansion from the stream. But when the party returns to Whitestone to prove that there is still hope in battling the Chroma Conclave, they're in for a bit of a surprise because Keeper Yenin isn't really herself, but the dragon Raishan. Remember when we all thought she might be that kid way back at the beginning of the season? Uh... Okay. Raishan has come to make a deal with Vox Machina. She proposes an alliance, because they'll need more than just the vestiges to stop Thordak's plan. And to really, really put a capper on the episode, it ends with Vorigal, voiced by Liam O'Brien, reporting Umbrasil's death to Thordak. The Cinder King isn't too concerned, because he's got himself a new army. A bunch of dragon eggs. What is this, the end of 1998's Godzilla? <laughs> no, it's the end of The Legend of Vox Machina Season 2. Vox Machina is sure going to have their work cut out for them when the show comes back sometime next year. It's a pretty explosive end to the season that managed to keep the core of the campaign it's based on while also providing some surprises for longtime fans. But while we wait for the next season, what do you folks think? What was your favorite moment in The Legend of Vox Machina Season 2? Which of Scanlan's songs is your favorite? Scanlan's <laughs> Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com. Thank <laughs> you.